Boxing. <laughs> Welcome back to Boxing on the Edge. I hope everyone's doing all right. Some good fights on last night. I hope everybody got a chance to enjoy those. Um, let's talk about Shakur Stevenson dominating Oscar Valdez. Retains his WBO belt, picks up the WBC super featherweight belt. And, you know, I was saying pre-fight, this is a great fight on paper, but I don't think it will be a great fight just because of how great Stevenson is. And, you know, he proved that last night. He was really good. <laughs> and I titled the, the, the video, you know, this is chess, not checkers, you know, like Oscar Valdez was playing checkers, trying to throw one punch at a time, not, not being creative, not coming in with his jab, not doing enough, very basic stuff. But it was basic because of how su superior Stevenson was. You know, and I spoke about this pre-fight. He's going to see these punches Valdez throws. And Valdez didn't commit enough to these harder punches. Perhaps that was part of the tactic because I think they knew if he started to open up, he would just get hit clean. And I think it was round five or six where Valdez came rushed in. Hands are down here. And, you know, he got caught with a beautiful left left hand. And I think moments like that are like you, what used to happen to when Floyd used to hit somebody. You know, he would keep them honest, sharp shots. And it's like, don't step into my zone. Because if you do, you're going to get, you're going to pay for it. And that's what Steven was, Stevenson was doing if Valdez decided to open up on, 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 you know, the very rare occasions where he really opened up. He did it a little bit here and there, but it wasn't anywhere near enough. If you were to say, you know, put Julio Cesar Chavez in there, hypothetically, you need that sort of, a, you know, tenacious energy about you. You know, you have to throw more punches. You have to do more. Valdez didn't, um, but he was getting thoroughly outthought, outboxed, outmaneuvered outcrafted out, out just like yeah in in every department and he um you know it's it's a danger when you when you start fighting like that that a monotony kicks in okay it's just monotonous and that favors the boxer that favors somebody like Shakur Stevenson you got to get creative I always talk about creativity and you need it so much against fighters like Stevenson and you know he had Valdez had what one or two maybe all right rounds the third round I think he put some pressure on and landed a couple of body shots and he's he had those sneaky right hands he was throwing but he didn't follow it up with anything you know, <clears throat> anything excuse me and yeah it was it was plain to see that like Valdez needed to do something quite special to pull out you know any kind of danger shot that might even cause Stevenson I don't think he landed any of his power shots like clean at all like the hooks or right hands that he throws I know he landed a few body shots here and there and I know he landed at some straight rights but Stevenson is just immaculate defensively tightens up he's like watching the whole time this is what makes these fighters so good their concentration level is amazing and he doesn't take his eye off your opponent. You never should, but it's easier said than done. And Stevenson does that. And, uh, you know, he was probing with the jab. And then he was coming around, like, left hands overhand. He was shooting him uppercuts, left hands to the body, jabs, move, sweat. You know, he put on a show, you know. Would you like to see him, you know, let it hang out too and get the stoppage? Obviously, fans would, but you can understand why he, you know... I think there was a moment in the ninth or 10th, even Andre Ward spoke about the fight maybe maybe being stopped if it carried on like, like that. But, you know, um, the what the right move, Stevenson, just keep doing what you're doing. Dominate, get the win, get the belt, move on. And bigger fights on the horizon, much bigger. You know, the questions are, is he a superstar now? I don't think so. But he's certainly on that track. You know, if he'd have, if he'd have um, gotten the knockout, it would have been better than getting points if it had got a first or second round explosive obviously this is how it works you know the more emphatic a win the higher up you go in the the status but he put in a great performance and he's gonna be hard to beat he looked big in there as well you know he's filling out as a man he's getting his man strength he's he's going to be extremely hard to beat and 
I think he's talking about moving up to lightweight, which is mouth-watering <laughs> prospect. You know, the fights with him and Lomachenko, fights with him and Devin Haney, or the winner of Cambosos, Devin Haney. You got Tank there. I mean, there's some absolutely tremendous fights to be had in the lightweight division. So we'll see what he does. I mean, you know, like, I kind of always knew that fight was going to play out like that. It was just going to be a one-sided masterclass. And Valdez, let's talk about him. You know, he was having trouble setting his feet and, and letting his hands go, obviously due to the Shakur Stevenson. But the minute he would try and get in range, he, he loads up and you can see that. <laughs> I mentioned that Shakur Stevenson is going to see that. And he might not punch, he'll just move. You know, he just, that's what, you know, this is what these master range control boxing experts do. They see everything from the shoulders to your hands, to your, your eye movement, to any tail that you're going to give away to them. They're just going to use it against you. And Stevenson did that. Not to mention, you know, Valdez was a bit disappointing by not really letting it hang out, throwing more punches, try a bit harder. I know it's easier said than done, but you know, he, there were, he did it in a few spots here and there. But I generally think he was he was just getting out skilled in his head, and he's thinking, "God, man, I, I, I don't want to open up and get chinned." <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he was thinking, I don't know, because the minute, like I said, the minute he did in like round five, he got clipped. And he didn't seem to be hurt or anything, but those clean shots, you know, they take their toll. They can have an effect on you psychologically too. And um, I think that is what ultimately happened. Uh, you know, he was even doing like his, <laughs> a few Canelo impressions, if you will. I'm not comparing the two whatsoever, but he was coming in with the high guard, trying to move his head like shooting one or two shots trying to like that educated reserved pressure com like complex pressure canelo puts on but he he's a different beast he knows how to do it he knows how to like set his shots up get on the inside and then let some serious combinations off without giving the telltale signs away which what about is i spoke about that pre-fight is so bad at doing um so anyway, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a chess match. It wasn't like the most entertaining fight, but you know, watching a pure boxer on display can be fun sometimes, you know. And, and I think Stevenson, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot more of him. He's a great fighter, and I'm looking forward to him getting challenged. And actually, shout out to Hatman. I was talking to him last night on the Element server, and he was talking about the lack of spite in in Stevenson. I completely agree. There's like, there is appear to be a bit of a lack of spite and that killer instinct, which you cannot teach. All right, you can't, it doesn't matter how many times you go to the gym and try to learn that, it is in here. And you're either born with it or you're not. And it remains to see whether he does have that in him because you really find that out when you get fully tested and pressed and hit and hurt and then see what happens. Because at the moment he hasn't really needed to go there would he have like shown it if he'd have like kind of dogged it out and really tried to get the stoppage late maybe but like ultimately you know that that reserve spirit doesn't shouldn't come out unless it needs to and that's why floyd was so good too because he, he never used to need to get to that <laughs> although he had it too mayweather had it you know he had that dog in him for sure but he 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 knew you know it, or he knew how to not let it get to that and I think that's what a lot of fighters try to do you don't really want to rely on <laughs> that, that's a bit draining that type of fighting to be honest with you but we'll see you know it doesn't look like it is there for Shakur if I'm honest but like I said you never know until they, they get tested and those intangibles when they pop up they're fascinating that's the most fascinating part about boxing and fighters learn about themselves as well Although I'm sure Shakur will really know if he's got that in him because he would have been tested in sparring at times, you know, where that will have come out. So his, his team will know. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy his boxing ability because he's great. He's going to be 24 years old. He's a unified champion of the world. He's moving up in weight. He wants to fight the best. This is great for boxing. This is great for boxing fans. This is what we want. We're on a roll right now and I love it. And that is it from me, Boxing on the Edge. If you've got any comments or anything like that to add, 
shoot it in the comment section below. Have yourself a great week and I will see you soon. Boxing. Knowledge. Knowledge.